In this video, we'll be importing our data and doing a little bit of exploratory analysis. So first, we'll be importing an Airbnb dataset for the city of San Francisco. Then, we'll be running some summary statistics, getting a sense of how to actually explore what's in our dataset. And then finally, we'll be doing some visualizations as well. So these are all the pre-processing steps that gets us a little bit more intuition into our data before we start building features and training machine learning models. Let's start with importing our data. Apache Spark initially rose to popularity because it was able to connect to a variety of different data sources. So that runs the gambit from traditional databases like Postgres, SQL Server, and MySQL, to message brokers such as Kafka and Kinesis, to distributed systems including Cassandra and Redshift, to data warehouses like Hive, and to a number of different file types including CSVs, Parquet, and Avro. So in our case, we have our Airbnb data set backed by a blob storage, in this case S3, but that could be the Azure blob store as well. First, I'm going to go ahead and run this uh, mounting data set logic. What this allows us to do is make sure that we're able to connect to the data, and it also creates a couple local variables that we'll use later on. So I have my file sitting here in S3, so it's under SF listings, SF listing clean.parquet. So now that we've mounted our data, let's go ahead and get it into our cluster. So we have this file path here. Let's call our data set AirbnbDF. And in order to import a Parquet file, we can use spark.read.parquet. And we can pass it this path. Now we can go ahead and run it. Now, if we click this drop down menu here, we can see the names of all of our columns and the associated data type. So next, let's go ahead and explore our data in a little bit more detail. First, we can just call display, which is a built-in Databricks function. And we can call display on Airbnb DF. Now when we execute that, we're going to see the first few lines of our data frame. So this isn't all that helpful. So let's go ahead and run some summary statistics as well. So calling display again. We can go ahead and call display on AirbnbDF.describe. So now we have some summary statistics. We're going to have the count, which is good for knowing how big our data set is. And it's also going to be good for picking up any null values that we might have. We also have the mean, or center of our data. We have the standard deviation, or the spread of our data. And we also have the minimum and maximum for each of our columns. Now let's start to visualize our data. So we know that we're going to be trying to predict price for all of these different apartment listings on Airbnb. So first, let's go ahead and call display on Airbnb DF. And let's use the dot select method and then pass it the string price. So this allows us to list all of the different prices. But if we click on this icon down here, we can plot a histogram of all of our different values. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. And now we can see that, generally speaking, we have a lot of lower priced values. And we also have a number of different values that go up to about $5,000. With this visualization, we can see that we have one spike in our data and a long tail. This looks an awful lot like a log normal distribution. So let's go ahead and try out that hypothesis. In order to do that, I'm going to need to import a function. So why not I import log from PySpark.sql dot functions. And here I'm going to do the same thing I did before, but I'm going to transform price using log. So I'm going to go ahead and say display Airbnb DF dot select. And then I'm going to select the log of price. Now let's take a look at how that histogram looks. Here, we can see that the histogram is behaving a lot more like a normal or Gaussian distribution. And if we go under plot options, we can accentuate this by adding a few more bins. Now this is behaving a lot more like a traditional Gaussian. So we know we're going to want to use the log price in some of our downstream analyses. So let's make sure that we add a column to our data frame that includes that log price as well as the original price. So here, I'm just going to modify Airbnb DF. And that's just going to be Airbnb DF dot with column. And we're going to call that column log price. 
and its value is going to be the log of price. So now we've just added that column to our data frame. Now let's visualize a scatter matrix of all of our different columns. Here are the columns that we want to use here. And let's go ahead and call display on Airbnb DF dot select of those columns. And now let's go ahead and click scatter from our drop down menu here. Let's make that a little bit bigger. And we can get a little bit more intuition into how our different columns are behaving with one another. And finally, let's display all of our listings on a map. So here we have a bunch of HTML code that we wrote in advance, but Databricks allows us to display this. So if we take a look at what we have, we can see the price of different listings across the city of San Francisco. So we can see that higher prices have a tendency to correlate with some of our downtown regions. In the next video, we'll be talking about Spark transformers, estimators, and pipelines, our three main abstractions within the Spark machine learning API. This will allow us all the tools that we need in order to train that end-to-end -end machine learning pipeline.